Hello everyone, so today I am going to be ranking Star Kid shows from my least favorite to my favorite. Just as a little disclaimer before I start, I'm doing this by subjectivity and not objectivity. If I tried to rank this list objectively, I think it would come out a lot different than it currently is. Another disclaimer is that a VHS Christmas Carol is not here. I have watched it, but I do think it's a little bit too different from the rest of the musicals on this list that I wouldn't really know how to accurately rank it. Just know that I have watched it and I did enjoy it immensely. Let's get started. But I just tell them, hey, it's me and my dick. This is a musical where its basic concept is what's going to hold it back for me personally. I've just never been a fan of sexual humor, and so a musical that is in its entirety sexual humor is not going to be my favorite. That's not to say that I hate everything about it. The costumes are very clever, and there are some jokes I like. A leading Joey role is always going to get a point in my book, and while this is early days, he still does a great job. Also, despite this show being at the bottom of my list, Listen to Your Heart is in my top, like, 15 Star Kid songs, which goes to show just how much that song absolutely slaps. The whole heart character, played by AJ Holmes, is my favorite part of the show, and he just truly knocks it out of the park. I try not to judge too much by video and audio quality because, come on, it's 2009, but it really does not help the enjoyment in any way. Early Star Kid also has little to no choreo, so that can't help it here either. So again, while I don't dislike me and my dick, it's at the bottom for a reason. is another show that unfortunately gets low points for me because of its premise. And that's because I have not watched any Star Wars media ever. Please lower your pitchforks. A lot of the jokes just completely go over my head, which while it's not the musical's fault for that, just makes me kind of lost sometimes. There's some really cool songs in the show, but they're all sung by the band rather than the actors. While I really like being able to hear the band, and Clark's voice is always amazing, and the dances they do on stage are very amusing, it ultimately doesn't really work for me, and I will always prefer the actors to sing themselves. Even though I said a lot of the jokes go over my head, there's still a lot of stuff that I could enjoy. I really love Brian Holden's performance in this. I have very basic knowledge of Jar Jar Binks, at least enough for me to get what they're going for with this character, and absolutely love what Brian does with it. Uh, excuse me, sir. Brian is my favorite Star Kid, so I'll always enjoy when he gets big characters, which you'll see later. Unless he's playing a vagina. What's that? Huh? Anyway, I have a feeling if I was a big Star Wars fan, this would jump up about like nine places. I think you're ready to go. It's a very Potter senior year. Senior year. We're not just kids anymore. All of the Potter musicals are very similar in quality, but I'll be putting senior year the lowest. Like I said, I try not to factor the audio and production quality too much, but with senior year it's a real shame that so many issues occurred, and it's hard to just ignore it when ranking these shows. I really don't know how much better I'd like this show if it was more polished. I do think it has my least favorite storyline out of all the Potter musicals though. I feel like it's just a bit messier, and they kind of just need to figure out how to throw the rest of the books they didn't touch on in the previous two shows into this final one. The songs, I think, are my least favorite of the trilogy as well, with special exception of I Was, Everything Ends, and Sidekick, which are all absolute bangers. I especially adore I Was. The harmonies are magnificent, and it's an absolute travesty that Darren Chris's mic was malfunctioning so badly. Even with all the technical difficulties, it's still a really fun show and a great send off to the Potter trilogy. You can tell everyone is having a great time, and it's awesome to hear the fans in the audience having a blast as well. Hey! 
Hey. Hey, I do, do I know you? No, no, oh no. Oh, that's so funny, my, my scar kind of tingles. <laughs> well, see ya. often switch a very potter musical and a very potter sequel and until the very end of writing this script i was still flipping them back and forth in the end i've decided to put sequel next i always thought the time turner storyline was very clever in order to justify a sequel or i guess technically a prequel the show has some amazing songs it's not over yet harry freaking potter and those voices come into mind those voices singing out There's some more choreo attempts here, and while it doesn't always work, sometimes it does, like the great choreo in Stutter. Some standout performances like Joe Walker as Umbridge and Brian Holden as a truly unhinged Lupin keep me rewatching this one quite a lot. A Very Potter sequel also does emotional moments extraordinarily well. Those voices and home stick out to me especially, and even get me misty-eyed at times. Starkid has always been great at juggling both emotional and funny, and this is no exception, with the musical also being absolutely hilarious, and you can tell a lot of the actors' comedic delivery have improved. While I mentioned liking the Time Turner plot, I do think it makes me a little less interested in the Golden Trio and Draco, because we've seen their development in a very Potter musical, just to go back to the first year. While objectively I know it's a prequel, it's just a bit unsatisfying to go back to them all being absolute dicks to each other, even if it can be really goddamn funny. Stop it! This is no way to go about this, okay? I gotta go through that. While I said earlier that Joe Walker as Umbridge is a standout role to me, I do think the Umbridge storyline can get just a bit contrived and repetitive at times, if not even uncomfortable, which maybe that's the point, but still. A Harry Potter sequel is an amazing follow-up in a world where sequel musicals are almost never a good idea. And the only reason it's down so low is I just enjoy the musicals above more. Alright, let's talk about a very Potter musical. It's a classic. There's a lot of songs that I adore in here, like Going Back to Hogwarts, Granger Danger, Different As Can Be, You're Not Alone, I Could Go On. Nothing's ever gonna take us down. Nothing. While not all of the humor has aged super well, it's still really funny. And I think this musical is the best at parodying the Harry Potter series out of the trilogy. He didn't just have one or crux. He had six of us. Oh, no. I've already killed the first five for you, so don't worry about that. <laughs> it's also got a surprising amount of heart in it. Like, why am I so emotional at Quirrell and Voldemort and whether they'll be able to reunite again? That's something I never thought I'd care about, and yet here we are. The show also does a really good job of taking just a bunch of shit from all the different Harry Potter books and mashing it together, and yet still making some kind of cohesive plot somehow. It's honestly impressive. Again, this is early Star Kids, so performances aren't perfect, and choreo is either non existent or everyone being a train, but it's honestly just charming at this point. I adore Joe Walker as Voldemort more than his umbrage, and he makes me love Voldemort in a way I never thought I could. This musical also made me not hate Jermione somehow, which is a feat on its own. Lauren Lopez's Draco is absolutely amazing, and I think is in its best form in this show out of the entire trilogy. I think that's true of pretty much every single character, with special exception of Ron Weasley, who is most definitely at his peak in senior year. I said this was the best at parodying Harry Potter, and while that's true, it's also obvious that that's the main function of the musical, rather than a well-structured plot. While I don't think it's as messy as senior year, it's not as focused and understandable plot-wise as a very Potter sequel was, at least until the end where it turns into Stop Voldemort. A lot of people have a huge amount of nostalgia for this show, which hey, I do too, but I try not to let that cloud my judgment too much. While the musical definitely has a soft spot in my heart, when I go back and watch it, a lot of my thoughts are just about how far Star Kid have come. In singing, and acting, songwriting, comedy, it's a classic for a reason. And with its flaws, it can be looked at as a testament to Star Kid's insane improvement over the years. <laughs> When I first watched Black Friday in 2020, I originally put it much lower on my list. As a predecessor to the guy who didn't like musicals, I found myself just 
very disappointed. However, it's been three years, and I have rewatched it and let it sit, and while it's still not at the top of my list, I have come around on a lot of its aspects. I think one of my main problems with it is a lot to do with its plot. I think it has too many characters to focus on, with me not being super invested in a lot of them, at least on my first watch. Most of the characters that we are introduced to here, I care way more about in Nightmare Time and Nightmare Time 2 than I did on my first viewing of this musical. Which might explain why I like it a lot more now, because I have gone and watched Nightmare Time, became invested in these characters, and then have gone back and watched Black Friday, liking these characters now. I still don't love Becky and Tom, but I have come around on Ethan, Lex, and Hannah, and Linda Monroe was always absolutely iconic. John Madison also knocked it out of the park with Wiggly. He's terrifying and just such a presence whenever he speaks. And now that we know more about the Lords in Black, Wiggly's interactions and involvement in the story is a lot more interesting to me and a lot more menacing. There are some songs in here that I love a lot, such as Feast or Famine, Do You Want to Play, and What If Tomorrow Comes. Do You Want to Play is especially a standout to me, and the entire scene might be my favorite in the musical. It's very effective and frightening. Kim and Dylan's vocals there send shivers down my spine. I also adore What If Tomorrow Comes, the intro especially. It's just haunting and gets stuck in my head constantly. Do you all see what I see? What I know? What I see? Tomorrow will come, tomorrow won't come, tomorrow come today. With this being a much newer Star Kid musical, production quality is much better, as well as things like acting, choreo, and vocal performances. Though a lot of the casts were sick around this time, which is a shame. Overall, while I do think this musical has a lot of hangups that stop it from climbing higher in my rankings, the things that do work really work for me. I also just love the Hatchetfield setting, so I am very biased on that front. And with some help from the Nightmare Time series, the plot is a lot more manageable than my first viewing. What if tomorrow? Firebringer is a weird musical for me because there's a lot that doesn't work, but there's a lot that does. Let's start with the negatives first. I don't find this musical super funny. There are some moments that I do laugh out loud with. You can just say, <laughs> no, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. But as a whole, the musical's humor just doesn't really do it for me. The plot is also pretty simple, and there's a little bit to be desired, especially in terms of the romance. I'm just not super interested in any of the romantic pairings shown in this musical, which can make certain scenes and songs a bit of a slog to get through. Also, there's that whole chorn thing that I'm just not even gonna get into. What saves this musical for me, though, and why it's further up than the rest I've talked about so far, is the music and the choreography. I adore the soundtrack of Firebringer. It's one of the most solid Star Kid scores produced, in my opinion, and I listen to it constantly. The harmonies in these songs and the general vibe of each is just immaculate. Even smaller songs like Backfire I enjoy very much. The standouts for me are What If, Climate Change, Do It Together, and Snarl. Meredith leading roles are very much appreciated here, and I truly think that Lauren is at her best vocally in this show. The songs allow her to show off her voice much more naturally than pretty much any other Star Kid role. I am not afraid, I'm not afraid of this, I'm not afraid of anything anymore, not even you, you stupid fucking storm. The choreography in the show is also some of Star Kid's best, and it's just so fun to watch them on stage. I'm constantly visually stimulated and auditorially stimulated. It just makes it such a fun musical to go back and visit. I do often find myself fast forwarding to all the musical numbers because I just love them so much in isolation. It's a weird situation for a show to be in where I love the musical numbers so much, but everything else just isn't really my thing. And so I found it really hard to place this onto the ranking. I do think this is the right place for it though. Pretty middle-ish. <laughs> Oregon 
is a solid musical. It's a very low budget show, but they make the absolute most of it. Joey Richter plays half of the characters, and I just completely forget that most of the time with how good he differentiates them. The audience participation is a different aspect that Stargate hasn't really done before, but it really works for the source material they're drawing from and just the musical in general. The score isn't my absolute favorite, but it does have some bangers like Independence and one of Starkid's best villain songs, that being Wagon on Fire, which is definitely in my top 10 Starkid songs of all time. Your wagon is on fire! The Bandit King in general is definitely a highlight of this show. The humor is a mixed bag. Some of this musical is really funny. Some of Starkid's absolute best, and I find myself laughing out loud a lot watching this musical. The comedic timing on display here is great, Jeff Blum and Joey Richter in particular being a standout. I want a new quality wagon with wheels that are circles, <laughs> and I don't want any fancy upgrades like a horny ox or a floor window. Oh. Oh. However, there's also a lot of humor in the show that holds it back from climbing any higher up my list. I understand dysentery is a very big part of the Child of Oregon game, and it's something that happened in history back then, but it's just really not my type of humor to have a whole song where they're just playing fart sounds the whole time. Other comedy songs like Naked in a Lake and Cock the Wagon also aren't really my cup of tea. The humor is just very hit or miss, with all the hits hitting very hard and all the misses missing very badly. The show can also be very heartfelt at times, and in my opinion does a wonderful job at capturing the complicated relationships between family members, such as mother and daughter, or between siblings. Eat it! I love you. Overall, I do really enjoy Treadle, Oregon. It's got some of my favorite music in it, the comedy can be amazing, but there's just some things I can't overlook to take it any higher up this list. Hello. <laughs> Titty Mitty. Before we get to the top five, let me just tell you that these are some of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make. Just be aware that these five are constantly changing, and I'm sure that in a week I'll look back at this video and they'll all have switched completely. That's how closely I rank them all. We'll say to me, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Fuck you. I am aware this is going to cause some people to close the video in shame and disappointment. Okay, I get it. Again, like I said at the start of this video. This is a subjective ranking and not an objective one. If I was trying to rank these musicals objectively, which has the best score, which works best as a musical, which has the best overall flowing plot, Twisted probably would be number one. It's just very solid at what it is. It's the Starkid show that I could genuinely see getting on Broadway if copyright wasn't, you know, a thing. There's some songs I don't love, like Take Off Your Clothes. There's some comedic choices I don't adore, such as, and hear me out, the tiger fucking bit. When I first watched this musical, it made me laugh so hard I nearly fell out of my chair. And I do still enjoy Ahmed's character very much. Joe Walker knocks it out of the park once again. However, when re-watching it so many times, I do think it can get a bit drawn out with its constant mention over and over again. That's not to say that no one remembers Ahmed is not a bop, because it is. There's also some other minor things, like the sultan not being my type of humor, or the genie thing. They did the best they could with the circumstances of, you know, not being Robin Williams and never being able to be Robin Williams, and they take the genie in an entirely different direction of him just making constant movie references and being really annoying. However, I am not a movie person, so I am then put into the shoes of Jafar, where I have no idea what the fuck the genie is talking about half of the time, and it just isn't super funny to me. All of that aside, those are all very minor nitpicks. I adore Twisted. I think the way they outlined the story was very clever in a sort of wicked-esque way. Dylan Saunders in a leading role is absolutely amazing, and his voice is just magnificent. Songs like Twisted and If I Believed show off his voice so well and are standout numbers to me. Science says you're dead and gone forever. Reason says I'm talking to the air. But something in my heart, some secret hidden part, illogically insists that you are there. 
transition from follow the golden rule to follow the gold and rule has always been iconic and always will be iconic. It's such clever writing and a really good way to sneak in a nice evil reprise in there, which is always appreciated by me. While the show is still definitely a comedy and a parody, which does make me laugh, it's also one of Starkid's most earnest and heartfelt. It truly gets me misty-eyed at times, especially the end with Jasmine's I wish you every happiness. It's just one of my favorite lines from the show in general. Starkid again does great at juggling both the comedic and emotional aspects in this show. I'm a Disney fan, so I will always enjoy the sequence of all the different villains coming in to talk about how their stories were also twisted, and they do it in a really good way so it's not too corny. I could keep waxing poetic about Twisted for the entire rest of the video. It's just probably Starkid's most solid piece of work and a lot of people's favorites for a very good reason. And I know, I said this before, but the only reason it's at number five is because I just enjoy the other ones a bit more. So I say no to status quo. Starship is a very weird musical. But it's a musical that takes that weirdness and fully embraces it. Some of its strongest suits are its characters, at least for me. I adore most of, if not all, of the characters present within Starship. Tootsie and Mega Girl are one of my absolute favorite relationships in a Star Kid show, and The Way I Do is definitely up there with some of my favorite Star Kid songs. Have a clue, I can see past the surface. The villain here, played by Dylan Saunders, also has one of Starkid's absolute best songs of all time, which is Kick It Up a Notch. It sounds like a very classic Disney villain song, which is completely right up my alley. Brian Holden also plays like the secondary villain character here with Junior, and I always love what Brian does, but here especially, he absolutely kills it. Junior is such a fun character, and he really shines comedically. Junior, maybe you heard of me. Or my dad, he's the head of the whole Galactic League. Oh, I heard of your dad. Yeah, I'm his son. Nice. Up and Taz are also an absolute delight to watch, and Joe Walker and Lauren Lopez both do absolutely amazing here with great character voices as usual. Because I get so attached to these characters, I am therefore invested in the story. Joy Richter plays Bug, the leading role here, and let me just say the puppetry in this show is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it's kind of insane what they've accomplished here. Just the pincer puppet alone would make me praise the show, but all of the puppets are extraordinarily crafted and make the visuals of the show super cohesive and visually pleasing. If I had to give some nitpicks, some of the songs never really worked for me, Beauty has never been one of my favorites, and it is a shame that Denise was sick on the day of the recording. And while I am invested in the story, I do think the pacing can be off sometimes. I don't know if this is the longest show that Starkid's done, but it certainly feels like it. On the other hand, the humor in the show is spot on, and I honestly have a hard time coming up with any jokes off the top of my head that didn't work for me. Damn that GLEE! They're always making twisted abominations of everything! I think it's the Star Kid show that is most predictable in its plot, and it definitely is the closest to the classical Disney musical structure, but there's nothing wrong with that, and I love me some Disney. Overall, an amazing show that somehow gets me invested in its strange world and has me revisit all the time. Oh, I love you so much! <laughs> Nerdy proves must die! Nerdy proves must die! I had a very hard time ranking Nerdy Poods Must Die because it is so new. I feel like in a month or so, I'll look back on this and it will have changed drastically. Right now, I'm putting it here though because I enjoyed it thoroughly. I just made a video on my favorite parts of each song so you can look at that for some more of my thoughts, but generally, I just think the score for this show is really solid. There's a few songs here and there that I'm not going to go back and listen to on my own, like Go Go Nighthawks or Best of You, but I think that most of the songs are just bangers. Increased production quality really helps you appreciate the songs in the first time around watching the musical rather than having to go and listen to the soundtrack. And the instrumentals and the harmonies within the show really just bring it up the list for me. The plot is pretty predictable other than the Lords in Black, but I will get to that in a bit. So the plot is not that much of a standout to me in terms of what makes me really like the musical, but it's not bad by any means. Pete and Stephanie are cute and all, but I did find their romance a little weak, which I know some of you will want to maul me over. Grace Chastity, played by Angela, is really my favorite character within this show. Mom, will you pass the butt stuff? 
I knew Angela was a good character actor. I knew that she was very good comedically, but she just truly knocked it out of the park. Richie and Ruth are also really great characters in terms of comedic value. Nani? John and Lauren both do really great selling these nerdy characters that you could totally see in the hallways of a high school. Standout songs for me are definitely High School is Killing Me, Hatchetown, and The Summoning. The entire summoning sequence is my absolute favorite in this show. It's just so effective at representing these eldritch beings, and it legitimately is creepy at times. Will Branner was a great addition to the cast and plays the jock stereotype insanely well. The choreo here, just like most new Star Kids musicals, is also great. I will say I wish the pro shot had a little more wide shots because sometimes I feel like we are missing things on stage with how many close-ups there were. Overall, like I said, it's a bit hard to judge it with it being so new, but I will always love the Hatchetfield setting, and they did a really great job of taking this slasher-type plot and threading it into a musical with characters I love and music I will listen to over and over again. Darkness will spare my soul. The guy who did a lot musical. I will always have a soft spot for the guy who didn't like musicals because it's the first musical that came out while I was actively in the fandom. I was in the premiere, I was ready for it to drop, and I remember being absolutely blown away by it. This is a show with a premise that in and of itself is going to bring it to the top of my list. It's probably not the first musical to play with the idea of everyone being in on the fact that it's a musical except for one person. However, it's the only show to take that concept and fully flesh it out to the point where in this musical it's an alien comet that's crashed and it's affecting everyone. We know now this is because of the Lords in Black, but at the time watching the show, I just thought that was a really cool setup and idea. And they executed it extremely well, mostly because John Madison is an amazing comedic actor. Pair that up with Lauren Lopez's incredible, sarcastic Emma, and you have a romance for the history books. Emma and Paul together are so compelling to me that you could have erased all the other characters and I wouldn't have cared. Okay, I might have cared a little bit, because all the other characters are also absolutely amazing. Bill, Ted, the professor, Charlotte, even, I don't know, Zoe and Nora at the coffee shop will have enough character there that I'm just so invested in this story and in this world immediately. Plot aside, the songs in this show are also fantastic. I truly find it difficult to pick out specific favorites, but I am partial to Inevitable. Pretty much all the songs except You Tie Up My Heart, I listen to constantly. The show is also absolutely hilarious, and just everyone is on their A-game with their comedic timing and delivery. Time is a precious thread in the fabric of the universe. It deserves its own tool of measurement. The choreo is also really cool because they do a great job at making it just uncanny enough where you know there's something a little wrong. If you were to force me to nitpick, I do think the pacing gets a little sluggish around the time when they get to Professor Hidden's lab. Overall, it's a masterclass in storytelling, and it would be number one if it wasn't for just one other musical. Listen to me, okay? Listen to me. I am aware how this looks. I am aware the Holy Musical Batman is not a usual pick for number one. I am aware that objectively it has many flaws. But like I said, this is not objective, this is subjective. And I fucking love Holy Musical Batman. Joe Walker as the best Batman ever put to any screen ever? Amazing. Brian Holden as the most whiny, superficial, unconfident Superman ever put to screen? Also amazing. The weird sexual tension between them throughout the entire musical? Just the cherry on top. Let's get some bad stuff out of the way first. Robin Sucks is, I think, one of Starkid's worst Act 2 openers. I try really hard to like that song because of how much I like the show, but I just can't. There's also some pretty outdated jokes in this musical, unfortunately, but Starkid have shown remorse for this and they have grown a lot since then. And that's kind of it. That's all I have to say that's bad about it. Now let's talk about what's good. Like I said, Joe Walker's Batman is the best Batman to be put on any screen ever. Robert Pattinson, get out of here. This is the emo Batman we need. I never had a pony. I never had pets. Just a bullshit butler who builds bullshit jets. Oh! And then put him beside Brian Holden, my favorite Starkid member. Yes, please. Superman is a really funny character and he gets me to laugh a lot. Brian Holden's delivery is definitely a part of that, but the way he's written as this weird man baby that people don't really like is just so funny to me because I don't like Superman either, but Brian Holden makes me like Superman. And tell Wonder Woman 
that her eagle brassiere can be found on the floor of my bedroom and and that I saw her naked boobies. Hey, Batman, it's Superman. Now let's get to what you're all waiting for, which is the villains. Yes, Jeff Blim plays the best villain in all of Starkid ever. Sweet Tooth is absolutely terrifying, but also very funny. Jeff Blim takes his usual chaotic energy and just dials it to 11. And then you give him a Harley Quinn-esque sidekick played by Jamie doing a high-pitched giggly voice. Amazing. All of the villains in this show are played so well, and I think Rogues Are We and its reprise are my favorite songs of this musical. But there's also Super Friends. Every time Dylan sings that one line, I am just absolutely smitten. And there's also. Which is probably the funniest song Starkid has made. Plus, do you hear Joe scream here? Or should I say, butthead? Ah! Or maybe it's The American Way, which is an amazing social commentary song. I could just keep going on and on about how much I love this show. The choreo isn't half bad either, which is surprising considering how early on in Starkid this is. Overall, it's not the most serious musical, it doesn't have the most solid score of Star Kid, it doesn't have the best production, but goddamn is it fun and I enjoy the absolute hell out of it. Thank you.